What's up, Nerdliest Crew? Welcome to another video. Today, we focused on Spider-Man Homecoming. If you're new to the channel, the Nerdliest Crew is dedicated to games like Marvel's Contest of Champions, where I'll be live streaming, you know, arena grinds, questing, and stuff like that, opening up crystals. If you're interested in stuff like that, it's a perfect time to subscribe. I also will be doing movie reviews and things all around Marvel's Cinematic Universe. If you're interested in DCEU, uh, you might not get much of that in here, because I haven't been so impressed yet. I haven't seen Wonder Woman yet, which I definitely need to see. Uh, my daughter is also trying to contribute to the commentary, so hope you enjoy that. Honestly, I have a strong bias towards Marvel. I don't like DCEU that much, and I really don't like their TV series. It's just a whole thing. It's We'll save that for another time. Today, we focus on Spider-Man Homecoming. I meant to do this video last week, but things got weird. We'll leave it at that. If you haven't seen the movie yet, Spoilers are ahead. I'm going to reference my last video, which was the pre-review. If you watched that, awesome. Only seven views, whatever, so you probably didn't catch it. But I talked about stuff around the trailer itself and what we saw out of Civil War. And I wanted to go back over those really quick and sort of talk about my expectations and what actually I saw. So first off was cinematics. I think they hit the nail on the head with the cinematics. Everything was beautiful. There was tons of great action footage. Lots of great editing, coloring, everything was just spot on in my opinion. So I thoroughly respect what they did and all the work they put into that movie. Next thing is storyline. A little bummed that we got zero origin, like at least a little bit would have been great. I know they were trying to stay away from what Sony had been doing with all the reboots and when I say all the reboots it's just two versions of Spider-Man on the Sony side. But it would have been nice to at least have one quick little section that's Peter Parker telling his friend, I forget his name, I'm pretty sure it's like Ned, telling him how he became Spider-Man. Like, he got bit by a spider, things got weird. It would have been cool if it was like similar to how the Ant-Man character goes through his story. Like, there was this one guy. I was at a wine tasting with my cousin Ernesto, which was mainly reds, and you know I don't love it. That was my only like, oh man, like I would have loved to see him in his original suit before his new suit got taken away and he had to use his original suit. To carry it on from Civil War straight into Spider-Man, hold a lot of that stuff together was pretty awesome. I guess there's some stuff floating around about how they broke the timeline with the movie, having the Vulture and his crew working on the, uh, the Chitauri giant worm thingy eight years before Spider-Man Homecoming starts, which is right after Civil War, and there's like this time gap that doesn't make sense. I feel like it was shorter, eight years, so maybe it took, and it's supposed to be 10 years, so maybe it took two years for them to start cleaning up the worm. I don't know. I don't know if it broke it, but honestly, I don't know if I care. It's such a big, huge project that I, if you're mad that that happened, you need to get over it. I'm sorry. Anyways, moving on. Last thing is my worries. Uh, as far as the pre-review, I was worried about a few things and there's only two that really stuck out to me. And that's one, some of the editing where Spider-Man is in CGI and he's like landing or running or flopping around, he is super malleable. And I don't know, I guess that's part of his character, like Spider-Man is just super malleable and he bends all around. But there's a couple times where I noticed that the action was a little bit too unrealistic. Uh, but it is a comic book movie, so maybe that's what they were going for. And secondly, my other worry was that they were going to have some kind of reference that they were holding on to a little bit too aggressively, overplayed, and that was young Aunt May. How many times did we have to hear somebody either hitting on her or saying something to her that was like inappropriate or like whatever? That's not the problem. It was just like, how many times do you got to do it? You know, it's a funny concept, but it did not need to be overplayed that much. Here's my actual review of the movie. Here's my reviews. Three things I'd like to focus on. On. That's the Vulture, a few things I'm impressed with, and Tom Holland Spider-Man. So first of all, the Vulture. This was an amazing villain. I think this has been the best villain in the MCU so far, other than Thanos, which we haven't really seen much of, but we know he's gonna be a badass. The Vulture, Michael Keaton just knocked him out of the park. I don't really know much about Vulture in the comics, but I do know that he's a weird character and he's got a quirky personality and I think Michael Keaton showed that pretty strong in his portrayal of the Vulture. I think there was a couple times he sounded like Beetlejuice, but that happens with some actors that are really great. They have a specific personality or type that they bring out and sometimes it's just that is what makes them who they are and I respect the heck out of uh, Michael Keaton for crushing it. And I really, really do hope we see him in the future. I'm sure we'll see him in number two. He might be a mainstay villain. 
Uh, maybe we'll see the Green Goblin like uh, everyone's rumoring around that maybe they're going to be trying to do the Sinister Six. That, of course, is if Sony doesn't try to do it on their side. If they do it on their side without there being some sort of contract that there is a shared universe between Sony and MCU, then I think there's going to be a lot of conflict of interest. It's going to be like as bad as how the Flash TV series is now conflicting with the DCEU Flash, and that can't be good. But moving on, some things that I'm impressed with in the movie. I'm so, so impressed with how the writers, directors, and everyone involved did a few things. Number one, I did mention it in the worries as far as editing, but I also think it was kind of awesome how they did this. What, how floppy they made uh, Spider-Man is, I, I guess it is a little bit realistic based on his character, but it was also just sort of like, it was wild. It's like something crazy to watch with somebody flipping around and flopping like a crazy little like Gumby. But the one thing that I'm really impressed by is how they uh, cued in the lack of something to anchor his web to. And this is definitely a spoiler. He comes out of a party and he goes to shoot his web and it just goes into the distance and he looks up and he's like, Crap, starts sprinting. This is huge. Like, there's a bunch of different memes out there that are saying like, how's Spider-Man shooting web out in the open? And one of them that was really funny is like, it was attaching to a pigeon and and this was also something that they missed in Civil War. They were in a giant airport that didn't have any tall buildings and Spider-Man does this with two webs, poles. I don't think that was attached to anything. Unless it grabbed onto a cloud, which I'm pretty sure is physically impossible. But I was super impressed by the fact that this was included, that they even had the guts to show that Spider-Man, you know, isn't just slinging web wherever and being able to swing from it. Dylan is making so much noise. That was probably one of my favorite scenes just based on the fact that, you know, they referenced something that typically is sort of looked, looked past and not really worried about. So to, to f kind of reel in the end of this video, because I think it's getting a little bit long, I just want to say Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man they've ever had. Uh, there's no questions asked. Like, a lot of people will say Tobey Maguire was the best one. I think that's just nostalgic. I don't think that's based on any merit. I think he was a good Spider-Man, but he lacked the kid, sort of funny, quirky, you know, awkward, gangly kid that is underneath this highly responsible and actionable Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield, there's not really much competition with him because he was kind of funny and quirky, but he was also a little bit too cool. Like he he acted like he his shit didn't stink. My opinion is not the dorky little Spider-Man who is just constantly whipping jokes around. Like literally my favorite my favorite line in the entire movie is when he's uh, getting at it with the ATM thieves and he gets stuck in that thing. He's like, he's like, this is. This feels so strange. I just have to say, Tom Holland has been the best casting of any hero in the MCU. I think he's going to be the new Stark or the new uh, Robert Downey Jr. once RDJ steps down and has to, you know, kind of pass on the mantle of the glue that holds all of the MCU together. I think it was Phil Coulson, and then he was killed off, RDJ took the mantle, and now I think they're gonna pass it on to Tom Holland. He's gonna be the new leader of the Avengers, I don't know, maybe. I just, I can't say enough about how awesome he was in the movie as Peter Parker and as Spider-Man. One of the hopes that I had, I mentioned in the pre-review, is that they would balance out that responsibility and kid, and they definitely knocked that out of the park. Like, there was no better reference of that struggle than in this movie. The competition obviously was so that he can track the vulture, but he went, he's trying to have a relationship with Liz, he's trying to do these things like go to a party, he's struggling with the idea of whether or not he should use Spider-Man to like jump in there or he should like just, it's amazing. Like that is exactly what I would have hoped for in something that's talking about a high school kid struggling to stay a kid or become responsible. I'm gonna shut up now because I think I went way over the time limit that I would wanna do. I should start putting up a clock to let me know where I am with uh, talking. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative. Hopefully it was entertaining a little bit. This is the type of thing I will be doing with every single MCU release there is. I'm gonna try to get to the Inhuman IMAX release as well as watch the whole entire season. I'm definitely gonna be seeing Thor Ragnarok next. If possible, I don't know if I wanna pay for Freeform or some of the other fringe networks that are gonna be showing stuff like Cloak and Dagger as well as the new, 
what are they called, the New Warriors or something. And then of course there's the Netflix series. So I will be providing all of my thoughts as far as those are concerned. And then of course, you can always catch me every day, most likely around 10 a.m. If it's a weird day, I'll be up on 2 p.m. or later. Catch me streaming. I'll be playing Marvel Contest of Champions. You can ask me questions. We can just hang out. But that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed my review of Spider-Man Homecoming. I thought it was the best Spider-Man that ever came out. And honestly, I think it's one of the top MCU films to come out because it was just solid. I give it a solid 20,000 stars. I don't know where that rating system came from. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Those are the things that help grow this channel and we can just add as many nerdliest crew members as we can. So I'll catch you in the next one. If you're new to the channel, the nerdliest crew is dedicated to playing if you're new to the Nerdliest Crew, if you're new to the channel, Dylan, Dylan, stop. I'm talking.